Well, looks like the folks over at Babbitt's Online have delivered. Uh, this is uh, my latest part shipment. I've got a new center cover for the frame. I've got a new throttle cable. I've got all my bearings and seals. All the ones that I'm replacing anyway. Now this is not the right part. This is supposed to be the oil line going from the uh, intake to the oil pump, but this is not the right size hose. I'm going to have to figure that out. Got some seals, carburetor parts. There are two parts that were on back order. One of them was the seal on the, uh, I believe it was the seal that goes on the carburetor drain bolt. And there was one other thing. The Oh, yes. The uh, little little piece of metal that I lost that holds the uh, the needle the, the the bowl needle valve in place the needle seat I lost that by accident but we're getting there yeah, and these are the clamps for the <laughs> for the oil line that is the wrong size eh, whatever okay. paid eight bucks for this I'm gonna have to figure that out I don't know what I'm gonna do with it anywho. What are we going to do here? I think what we're going to do today is we're going to put the um, we're going to put the throttle cable in place, and uh, we'll get that replaced up, make it make it nice and pretty again. And uh, we're going to put our bearings, which I've already cataloged and labeled, the axle bearing, we got two counter shaft bearings, and a crank bearing, and we're going to put these in the freezer. Why I have that? For the, oh, you know what? That was for Thanksgiving. I lost it. Anyway. All right. Now we're at a point where we can start putting some of these bearings back in. So I've got um, my uh, rear axle bearing and seal. Those came in. So let's go ahead and pop them back in there. All right. So to do the job, I'm going to remove this retainer. find my axle bearing. So I had it in the freezer for a little bit so it should just slide right in. I'm hoping. Let's open a little plastic bag. So the bearing, now the bearing goes in second, the seal goes in first. And because the seal is actually sealing oil from coming out of the transmission, from getting into the bearing, uh, it actually has to go in with the uh, yeah, face up. So it's going to go in like this. Just like that. Didn't really put up much of a fight, now did it. Okay. There we go. There's our new seal. I should have oiled that seal first, but I didn't think about it until just now. <laughs> so it was... Well, it's too late. It's in there. It's got to go in anywhere. Here's our bearing. We're going to drop that in now. I'm going to dry it off. It's got a little bit of moisture on it from being in the freezer. So I'm going to just dry it up. This is a sealed bearing. Nice and tight. Look at that. Compare that to the original one, which was just a little bit looser. This is the sad part. The original bearing was actually just fine. Um, but I ended up putting a new one in because I had to take it out anyway. So. I'm going to use the original bearing. That's our bearing setter. And that should be it. That's it. It's in. Now it was that freaking easy. Yeah. When you hear it tapping solid, it's in, it's good. Never, never, never hit a bearing with a hammer directly head on. Don't do it. Tempting as it might be, bad idea. A ruined bearing. And I do speak from experience. I've done it before. One of the first bearings I ever put in, not knowing what I was doing, I was a cocky son of a bitch. I just went ahead and did it. And I ruined a good bearing. I was very young and very naive, and well, I've learned some learned from my mistakes, so to speak. Everybody's got to screw something up at least once to learn a few things. That's just how you do it. That's how you learn. 
hopefully I'm not some, not on something very expensive. So as of right now, our final drive or our our axle bearing is in place. Yay! I'm gonna whack it with a T handle. Give it a little bit of. There we go. And that's it. There's our, there's our final drive. The uh, the crank bearings are going to be a little more complicated. I did not order the inner crank bearing. Um, it is fine. I want to show you guys something else. Wait, did I put in the wrong bearing? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> all right, I'll shut up now. I want to show you all something uh, unique. And yeah, take one of our bearings out of the freezer. Now, I, w I, I had mentioned this earlier in the video that um, just because a bearing has, I don't know how to describe it, side to side movement or just plain rockiness. So here's a, here's a, here's the brand new crank bearing. Now, watch this. I'm going to move, I can move the bearing, the inner race in and out just a little bit. That is normal. This is a brand new bearing never installed. And I, I point that out because I'll show you in a second here. The reason I'm pointing this out is because I did have some initial doubt as to the condition of the, uh, the inner crank bearing. And I'm going to justify to myself mostly why I'm not doing this bearing because it is so much more work to get to it. I now have to yank. I need to use impact tools. I have to find a tool that will hold this crank in place while I zap this nut off. I have to heat this nut up because it's put on with thread locker. I don't want to do it because I don't want to waste my time and energy and efforts on stuff that is just not necessary. So the crank has a little bit of rocking movement to it. Because right now, it's only being supported by that one bearing. And as I just pointed out, with a brand new bearing, there is a little bit of movement like this. Okay, so that is good. And the reason that this bearing does not need to be changed right now is because it is internally lubricated by the, by the gearbox, and there's nothing wrong with anything in the gearbox, so it indicates adequate oil changes. The reason we're changing... Once again, the reason we're changing this bearing here, there we are. The reason this bearing is bad is, listen to it, it is, this bearing is toast because it got burnt up from lack of lubrication because the engine ran lean. That is the only reason we're cracking the engine case apart and the only reason we're doing any of this is because the engine showed evidence of burning lean. If I had taken the cylinder head and the cylinder off and I found that the, the crankcase looked nice and clean in there and it showed signs of running correctly and the thing didn't seize up 11 billion times uh, from the scuffing on the piston, I know that to be true, um, I, would not, I would not have gone this far. Because a, a lower end on a two-stroke with only 3,000 miles should not need to be rebuilt under normal circumstances. This is out of the ordinary. This is not normal. But I also have a new seal for the um, Kickstarter. And also, this lever here, I have a seal for that too. But that one I'm going to have to pull the whole freaking engine apart to get to. So let's see how much work that's going to be. Okay, now I think what we're going to do, we're going to pull this uh, second speed clutch pack out. Carefully. Alright, that. Make sure that we take everything out in the right order. Don't misplace anything. Okay, good. The owner's or the service manual only goes so far. So we're gonna have to take this out. This is our starter interlock. Looks like it's mushroomed a little bit. This comes off. 
this comes out somehow. What's it locked into? Ah, I gotta take um, gotta take this sir clip off. I mean, yeah, e clip, whatever the fuck it's called. All right, that's gonna come out. Hopefully I don't have to use this video as evidence when I go to reassemble. This little thing comes off. And we can take that out. Okay, now we're getting in there. Now we can get to the chain drive. Yeah. And where's that? Oh yeah, I still gotta take the I gotta take the whole chain drive out, don't I? Can I do that? Or do I need to do special magic things? Uh, take this sir clip off. Almost there. Come on. Take that one off. And now we can get this out. Now is a good time to check this. Ooh, ooh, it's a little rough. It's a little rough, folks. Does not feel nice. So I guess we found a problem. The good news is I actually have these bearings. Um, yeah, I can. F it should not feel like this. It should feel smooth. So I got. I got to change out this bearing and the one on the other side. I was afraid of that. <clears throat> so I'll just yank this. This is our starter interlock lever. Get this out of here. We'll change the seal. I can knock that, knock that thing out. And there we go. should be a, a detent or an, uh, a cutout or something that tells me where it goes. But anyway, All right, that's held in by an E-clip. E-clip looks like the letter E, hence the name. And it can usually be pulled off with screwdrivers. There we go. This, this is an E-clip. Get this out of here. Yeah, that seal was bad, so I made a good call there. Oh, 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 oh. There we go. All right. Yeah, that seal was leaking. You know, any bike, any car, any bike from the 1960s, 70s, 80s, even 90s, gonna have oil leaks. You're gonna have oil seals that are bad. It's just the nature of the game. So here's that oil seal. We're going to just pop that out, pop in the new one, be on our merry way. Almost there. There it goes. Now, ah, did I scratch the bore? Nope. Yeah. All right, now, where did this go? Just kidding. I don't know where that goes. Let me clean up these uh, these parts before we put that seal back in there. Yeah, get all that sand and grime out of there. Oiling seals. Ideally, you want to use uh, the oil that the seal is being exposed to. But oiling the seals allows them to slip in a little bit easier. Is that the right one? Or is that for something else? I got the wrong one. Actually, this is the one I need. This one goes to the uh, Kickstarter. Yeah, this is the one. 
It's a pretty heavy duty seal. Get some oil on it. You want to oil the seal lips as well as the outer ring. And you tap them in with a socket that's about the right size. That's even better. Alright, now that seal's installed. Okay. Put that shaft back in from the inside. This is one of those parts that you could easily forget to leave in there. You just accidentally leave it out. And you don't realize it until the whole engine is completely assembled. And then you go to start it. And you're like, hey, the starter won't engage. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, it happens. Put some oil on that shaft. Slide it in there. And there you go. Now we're going to put the... Uh... Now this, this particular tool I bought on eBay for 40 bucks, and it has let me down three times. Fourth time to charm. Yeah, it succeeded to let me down a fourth time. Piece of shit. You know, <laughs> even a cheap tool should work at least once. Round two. This is a uh, blind bearing puller set that I rented from AutoZone for a deposit, <laughs> drum roll, of $198, $160. So, I'm going to buy this. I'm, I'm going to find out where I can get this exact tool. I'm pretty happy with this one. It um, has much better quality than the piece of crap that I bought on eBay. In that it works. Um, <laughs> this is the wrong size wrench to use, but it works. So let's, I mean... Right there. Oh wait. How did I do that? Uh, it just barely fits. It's the wrong size. I. Uh, Going in the wrong direction here. It's totally the wrong size. Get that nice and snug so we don't have it pull off. All right, I'm gonna get a thread on the slide weight. Oh wow, that actually um, bound up the bearing. I got it under so much pressure. There you go. There you go. Bearings out. Getting this done with the right tools is the only way to do it. It really is. And sometimes you have to go to extreme lengths. You have to rent things, and it costs money, and it sucks, but you got to do what you got to do. Um, this is made by OEM. I've, these are the tools that most auto parts stores were selling a few years ago. And uh, I'm actually going to put that on my, on my list of things to get a good quality bearing for it because there are many projects that I would have been able to tackle if I had the right tools uh, at other points in time. So I'm going to return that to the store and get my deposit back. Now I'm going to freeze those two bearings. We're going to let them freeze for a couple hours. I'm going to go return that tool because I don't need it anymore. And we'll see you back in just a few minutes. Ready, set, go. Just like that. That is how a blind bearing tool is supposed to work. Alright, now let me loosen that up. Whoopsies. Okay, so now it's ready. It's, uh, yeah. At this point, we can start reassembling the transmission. We've got the bearings in the freezer. They've been freezing away for the past three hours or so. Should be cold enough. Okay, they're not going to just drop in because obviously they are interference fit. Um, here's my socket. And I'm just going to give it some love taps. It should just it should it shouldn't give up much of a fight. So yeah, 
that's nice and smooth. So this bearing is installed. I'm going to pop in some oil. Pre-lubricated. This is not, this is, this is 20W, SA20. Um, I ought to get myself an oil can and fill it with uh, something a little heavier than that, but that'll just protect it for the initial startup, and then once the real oil starts to flow in there. So let's start uh, reassembling the engine, or this part of it anyway. Okay, and now we're going to reassemble our transmission very carefully. Where's that little plastic donut? Okay. It's very important to uh, to make sure this is all seated in correctly because if it's not, you're going to have fitment issues. In a big way. There we go. All right. Okay. Press on that. Press that down. We've got to make sure there's enough clearance for our snap ring to go in place. It's a tight fit. There's not a lot of uh, there's not a lot of forgiven forgiveness here, and uh, it's just a very tight fit. So. sure that's nice and clipped in. Now this should be able to freely move unencumbered. Okay, next you want to get the um, this cog goes in place. It has to be installed Alongside this, there we go. All right, but we're gonna have to lift this back up again. This comes up, and then we get the Kickstarter thing in there. All right. Once that's all in place, now I've already checked to make sure that my washers and bushings are all in the right order. That is absolutely critical. Uh, there's a nice little handy guide in the uh, in the service manual for that. So we need to put one, actually one snap ring. We, we missed one little step here. So pull that off. Pull this off. There's a snap ring and it goes right in there. but I believe there should be a washer between the snap ring and that cog. I'm going to double check the manual first before I continue. Now I consulted with the manual and a circlip does in fact go straight on to uh, that shaft. So I'm going to put that circlip on. There we go. It just seemed a little uh, odd to me that it, there wouldn't be some kind of a, a buffer or something, uh, but there isn't. Now this little stack of washers. Now this one has a rubber coating on the uh, on the on the surface. That actually is faced down. It goes on like that. And we have our second speed clutch drops in place. Oh, before we do that, it'd be important to uh, 
this on there. And that interfaces with this. And while we are here, we're going to drag the um, spring into position. Let's see if I have a better. I have better tools for that. Um, for that They're outside, but I'm going to use a flat blade screwdriver. Hold it like a chopstick. place. There we go. And this one's got rubber on it and it goes on like that. And then finally our circlet. Now the book says you want to make sure this is adjusted so there's no end play and well that's as good as I'm gonna get it so <laughs> okay we gotta work fast I've just heated the engine casing to 300 degrees and I froze the bearing we're not gonna put the seal in yet that's gonna go in later Preferably would use an arbor press, but I do not have one. It's in. A couple of taps for good luck, and there you go. This bearing's a little, uh, a little frozen. We're going to put some oil in that thing. Now the heat from the, the engine case is going to transfer directly to the bearing and it's going to dry it out for all that moisture that's in there. Uh, so that'll be all part of the cooling process, the heating process. <laughs> so now, this nice smooth running bearing. Now once it has some oil in it, it's going to be even smoother. But, fresh out of the package, feels nice. Okay, and that is how you put an engine case bearing. The correct tool to use again is an arbor press but most people do not have those in their kitchens if you do you're a better person than I am uh, so <laughs> we're gonna let this cool off um, heating the engine case expands the uh, the bearing um, bore or seat just a little bit and freezing the bearing shrinks the bearing down as much as possible. Now you could actually probably have better luck if you froze the bearing with liquid nitrogen but then it would shatter upon re-entry. Uh, <laughs> perhaps. Um, now to protect my counter I have a plastic cutting board. To protect the plastic cutting board from melting I have this steel pan which helps disperse the heat a little better. So. Cutting board move on to the next thing. Now I'm going to be doing some work off camera to this bike. I'm going to be taking the exhaust system and um, I'm going to weld up the cracked mounting ear at my parents house. And I'm going to run over to the auto parts store and see if they have a better bearing puller that might do a better job at yanking the, uh, the uh, counter shaft bearings from the engine case and everything else. So I'm going to put a couple of drops of oil. Yeah, this bearing's getting hot. <laughs> that heat's transferring quite nicely. Let's get some oil in there so that it doesn't flash rust. Hold up. All right, let's get some oil in that bearing. This is just three-in-one oil. It's not the right stuff, but it'll get washed out very, very quickly once the uh, engine starts for the first time. 
just don't want it to rust on me. Not that it will. It's a little gritty though. I will say that. It's a brand new bearing. It's a little gritty. But maybe it should be flushed out with some parts cleaner. Yeah, it's, that's nice and smooth. There we go. It's getting warm though. Oh boy. Getting warm. So we're going to let that cool off. Compare that to this piece of crap. <laughs> so I'm going to put the seal on. Once I get uh, once I get this engine assembled, then I'm going to slide the um, the new seal on with a with a piece of PVC pipe. I got to go to the parts store. Uh, I'm sorry, the hardware store. And I'm going to slide that new that new seal on with some PVC pipe. I don't want to cook that new seal. My plan is to heat this bearing up a little bit with a torch, just a little bit because you don't want to cook it. Heat this inner race up just a little bit to slide it onto the crankshaft a little easier. I don't have the tool um, needed to press this on with onto the crankshaft. There's a, there's a special tool you can buy that um, screws on to the, the end of the crankshaft and it actually presses this bearing onto the, onto the crank. Um, it's an expensive tool. It's something I would use once and I don't want to just blow money on something I'm going to use one time in my life. So if I start doing more of these engine rebuilds and maybe I'll I'll justify the expense. Um, I tried to rent one but nobody rents them so I'll just do it the hack and pack method I guess until I uh, have access to the right stuff. But there you go. Starting to cool down. That works very nicely, let me tell you. Well, now that we're pro our progress on the bearing job is a little bit delayed, why don't we start stripping the paint off of these engine castings? So, the engine block and the transmission assembly were not uh, coated or painted from the factory, which is typical of these older Japanese bikes, especially the cheaper ones. Um, but the outer casing covers are or were. This is our stator cover. Now this was painted. It had a uh, like a metallic silver with a clear coat originally and that has been of course it got ruined and then somebody put Krylon all over it and that looks like hell. So I stripped off everything with very little effort and I'll show you how I did it. Um, we're gonna do the same thing to this uh, to this uh, transmission case cover. Um, you can see see these little rust squiggly marks. These little these little marks that are like they look like veins almost. Uh, this is what happens when corrosion starts underneath a painted surface or underneath a, a paint coating, whatever. What happens is the bond begins to fail on that paint, and it eventually starts to develop these little they're like little rust trails. And over time, those little rust trails will widen and get bigger and start causing the paint to bubble. Um, I know that when my, when my dad stripped the paint off the hood of his truck, he found dozens of these things. This is, this is rust or corrosion just waiting to happen. You don't typically see this until the paint falls off, but that's what happens underneath it. But we're going to paint this with alloy wheel paint. It's not perfect, but it does the job. I've used it on, on, on projects like this before. It looks good and it actually does hold up pretty well. Um, I ought, I really should use a self-etching primer on these pieces. In fact, I might just do that. I actually have a can of it sitting in the uh, in the shed over there. So I'm just gonna. I might just do just that. I'll take some self-etching primer, which etches into the aluminum alloy or whatever the hell this is made of, and uh, what it does is it allows m regular old paint to bond to it. What we're doing here. I gotta act quick. I gotta shut the hell up and do the job. What we're doing here is we're spreading this paint stripper, which is extremely noxious. I am using it indoors, but the fumes aren't that bad. It's not an aerosol, which I find smells even worse. Um, the aerosol version of this is far more difficult to deal with, I find. But this is a, this is a Rust-Oleum aircraft remover. Um, and it, uh, it's designed to strip 
airframes. Uh, and it's it's best if you brush it on. I find that's what I've what I've been doing with it. You brush it on. It works real nice. I've already taken the uh, seal out of here. I did that earlier in the video. I think you saw me do that. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna you have to do this in like two maybe three passes. Just kind of let it do its thing. It, it instantly instantly causes the paint to wrinkle and bubble right up and uh, it, this paint will just wash right off at this point. You want to really be cautious. I'm wearing gloves for a reason. I don't normally wear gloves in these project videos. Um, this is probably the one time I, you'll ever see me wear gloves. This stuff burns. If you've ever got an oven cleaner on your hands, it's pretty much the same sensation. Very similar. Um, take some steel wool and we're going to kind of work this stuff loose. All right, and that is how we do it. Um, so I did the same thing on this. I just um, did about two or three. Of course, you wipe it off with a towel, throw it in the trash, do it again. And, um, yeah. Let's take a look at the exhaust. So this is the original muffler. Um, I have just cleaned it, sanded it, painted it with uh, VHT header paint. It's designed for the, it's the, one of the highest temperature spray paints you can buy in any ordinary auto parts store. I also welded this washer uh, to the mounting ear and that's because the um, there was a crack, a stress crack. I still see it. Oopsies. I made a mess of that. Uh, there's a stress crack right there. Let's see if we can get it to balance somewhere. There we go. There it is. A little crack right there. Probably can't see it. This paint absorbs light really well. Anyway, um, because of that, the muffler would never mount correctly. I mean, there's a chance that the rest of this could break off. So I welded all the way around. Nice little heavy-duty steel washer um, right to the metal there so that way it, uh, it won't break off so that's all set this is ready to bolt on I baked it on the grill for a little while this is a, a heavy-duty paint works really nice